I'm not going to lie, I still don't know what's going on in the final episodes of Neon Genesis Evangelion. But I do know that it made me the person I am today. Thanks, Existential Crisis. I, am I, am I live in a constant state of nostalgia, from music to replaying games from my childhood, and honestly, it's probably what sucked me into Marvel Crisis Protocol. So when the Yami Painter sent me the full range of the new Fnatic War Paints, the first thing I did was pull out all the greens, blues, and purples. And then the Norn Emissary turned up. I don't know why the Norn Emissary reminded me of Eva 1 when it went berserk, but it did. In this video, we're going to try out some of the new Fnatic War Paints from Army Painter, because as I mentioned, they sent me the full range. Yep, me of all people. Each hue in this range has six paints, so gradually step up in brightness. For the skin, we're going to use the full six from the Magenta family, but we're actually going to start off with Terrestrial Titan, which is purple. This is just to take the edge off of the Black Primer. Each time we step up in brightness, we're going to cover less of the model, making sure that we leave enough of the previous colour visible so it creates a gradient. You might not see much difference between each layer, and that's a good thing. With only a slight difference, it actually helps us create a smooth blend with only using layering techniques, and with these paints already pre-made, we don't even have to mix anything. Which is also great for remembering colour schemes if you're going to paint an entire army. I don't know about you, but when I've painted bulk models in the past with mixed colours, sometimes a few models can be a little different. After reaching our midtone, we want to cover even less of what we were doing before because now we're into highlighting. The brighter magentas are going to be focused on the sticky outy bits, things with harder edges or the top of a sphere or a cylindrical shape. Like the little balls here on the chest. Ha! <laughs> Chesticles. While we're highlighting, it's important to know that you don't have to highlight everything to the same level. We're leaving some of the lower and more hidden parts that wouldn't be exposed to the same amount of light helps to sell the idea that the model is interacting with light. And you can use this to direct focus to specific areas of the model, like the chesticles. You've seen the thumbnail and maybe even the video that we had up on 40k in 40 seconds, so you know that the vast majority of the carapace is going to read as green. But we want a little bit more interest, so we're actually starting with the blue. I know Evil One doesn't really have blue in its colour scheme, but sometimes we can use artistic license to blend some of these ideas. As long as it still keeps the same feel and recognisability, you don't always have to stick to the original source material. Not you, Wheels of Time. Because we're building from blue into our green, I'm not going to be using the whole family of blue. Instead, I'm just going to use the blue into a turquoise and then to our green, and I'll show you how to make that pop. Because the carapace is an organic shell, we want to try to control a little chaos with giving it some texture and some imperfections. Thinning down the paint, we're going to start swiping, splotching and stippling, while still making sure that we're pushing the paint towards the centre of the shapes to build our transitions on. It's going to create different levels of opacity, irregular shapes and sometimes even tide marks. For the Fnatic paints, I find that one drop of paint to one drop of water is great for layering and two drops of water gets us closer to a glaze consistency. It's also going to look horrible for a little bit. We have officially entered the poo phase. Where everything looks like poo, you feel like poo and you feel that everything that you paint from here on out is going to be poo. Just work through it, you'll be fine. And if you want to stop here for a synthwave take on the traditional behemoth scheme, do it. It looks awesome like this. Then we get into the green and we're going to do the exact same thing in a smaller area. The easiest way I've found to do this is layering in the top section and then you can stipple in the transition. Stippling is just stabbing the model with paint making tiny dots. Now here's where things start to get electric. Highlighting green with yellow is going to give us a massive pop of vibrancy, especially with what we're going to do next. Fluorescent paints are pretty transparent, which means it's hard to build up a strong colour with them, but that actually works in our favour. With a few thin coats of Gauss Green, we're going to turn up the saturation. But it's also doing something else. It's going to help us blend the colours together. You can think of this in a similar way to glazing. You're using thin paint with mineral coverage to blur the different colours together. This one just happens to make everything bright as balls. Let's jump ahead to the good part. Now, obviously, I finished this off camera, but it's only things that we've done before in previous videos, like the claws, the base, and a little bit of black lining. If you want to check out how we do the claws, go and check out the Gaz video. A massive thank you to the Army Painter for sending out the Fanatics range. I can highly recommend you guys go out and at least try some of these paints. And as always, a huge thank you 
to our Patreon Prismatic Heretics. You guys keep the channel rolling. See you next Tuesday. And one more thing before we go. Gotcha.